Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast for the recently deceased. I'm Nate Roberts. I'm Rodney Goddick. How are you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm just coming off a sickness, um, so I, I still might be a little nasally, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, that's awful. It makes everything miserable. But yeah. it's early for the season, so you're probably due for a couple more of those this winter? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Thanks for reminding me. Um, well, you gotta take <laughs> one game, you know? Yeah, it yeah. makes this one not hurt. Like, great, I got one out of the way. There's only a couple left, right? So. Alright, alright. Uh, the bright side, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, um, the killers. Yes. Uh, the rebirth, if you will. <laughs> will not <laughs> all right uh so uh tonight we will be talking about birth slash rebirth why don't you tell us about it rodney all right birth rebirth i like to omit the slash i just don't feel comfortable saying it ha huh. birth rebirth a morgue technician successfully reanimates the body of a little girl but to keep her breathing she will need to harvest biological materials from pregnant women when the girl's mother, a nurse, discovers her baby alive, they enter into a deal that forces them both down a dark path of no return. This is written and directed by Laura Moss, uh, co-written by Brendan J. O'Brien, starring Marin Ireland, Judy Reyes. Uh, Frida Wool has a top billing in IMD Bears, but we're going to give it to the kiddo, A.G. Lister, playing Lila, or Lila. I can't remember how she pronounces it in the film. So... That synopsis, Nate, was quite a mouthful. That was pretty much all of the fun intro to the movie to, like, if you yeah. go blind, these are the things that you're going to love to discover. And being told that, I'm not too keen on that. So I do not yeah. appreciate the IMDb. I also feel like the, the harvesting uh, from pregnant women is a little, yeah. it's a little, it's a little much because... A little on the clit there. I think yeah. they need to kind of reel it back and let me kind of figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Um... Look, we're going to be open with... Uh, female reproduction genitalia and things like that because it's all about this movie plus i mean men were objectified early on in this film so i think it's fair that we objectify just a little bit or get, just get outright and identify what's going on right? they, yeah you know, they, they, de they definitely were that was a that was a good scene though um <laughs> one of the best according to some people <laughs> or the only best scene yeah right um and some by some people he means me and with that i'll start uh, <laughs> birth rebirth. Um, I would call this movie uh, a slow burn that never quite gets you there. Um, you really, really want it to. It's edging you pretty hard, and you just don't. You just don't finish. Um, great performances uh, from the two leads. Um, extremely low body count. No gore, uh, almost no, go almost no gore, and um, yeah, just uh, with a lot of A twenty four films coming out all the time, and we get so we get a ton of really good slow burn. This this movie just doesn't stack up. Uh, I gave it a four out of ten. Oof. Uh, so. Let's let me tell you why you're wrong, brother. <laughs> uh, no, but in all fairness, um, I am surprised that well, not surprised. I have reasons to believe why you this didn't land for you the way that did for me. Uh, but I also don't want to diminish your ability to approach a film just because you haven't had specific, maybe similar life experiences or lived with people that have gone through similar life experiences. Um, you know, you. Uh, so that's, I think, why I engaged with this film a lot more. So this film really is, I love it for a lot of reasons. Yes, it is a slow burn, and I think that it's beautifully executed. Performances, 100% agree. They're both wonderful, the two female leads, also written and directed by female. Uh, most of the crew was female, not that they were, like, excluding other people, but they wanted to be as representative of you're the right person for the job, but then also give voice to lots of uh, non-binary and female people in production. I think the soundtrack was also uh, female-led, and it, it's a great soundtrack. So all of that's going on, but it's not overt, and it's not like in your face, this is a movie about female empowerment, but it's dealing with women's issues and with birth uh, and reproductive health 
and trauma associated with that whole process, grief through that process. And you find two women at different walks of life, but that are on similar trajectories or paths, obviously, that entwine with the story that unfolds. And it's just, it's a modern day Frankenstein story. It's very overt in that it's paying homage to that. Mary Shelley being a amazing female auteur before that was a thing and writing a book when she was a teenager that would become a classic, whole classic that everyone talks about. There's modern day lit classes that focus just on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Well, I'm not the, a big fan of the, the original text. The creator of horror as a genre, according to some people, most people. Sure. Uh, she even kind of penned it as a, or did it with a male's um, name whenever she submitted it to whatever writing uh, thing. Right. So that was just the case. So it was. So anyway, yes, it is slow burn, but the story and the way that it unfolds is so um, engrossing that for me, I was hooked in the whole way through and everything that transpires, there's lots of body horror type elements, some that are over and in your face that I was definitely kind of um, cringing, uh, specifically during one scene. But it's just, uh, it's like a lim limitation about all of these issues that it's dealing with as far as life and then of motherhood and reproduction. I was totally into it. Uh, Birth, rebirth, before we get into the details, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. Okay. Uh, Strong 7. All right. At, at this point, we'll be moving on to uh, to some spoilers. So if you liked our take and you want to check out the movie without it getting ruined, uh, stop now and come on back later after you've seen the movie. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think you know, <laughs> having having kids, Nate, that's what I'm saying. Like having been through sure. the process and in the hospital rooms when these things are being discussed, for me, I had much more uh, of life experience that really rooted me into the the slowness of the sadness that they were experiencing. Yeah, the and, only the only thing I really could relate to in that movie was the bathroom handy. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was it was so funny. What a great scene! It was great because, and you told me uh, that scene came on. You had already seen this, and you said like, "Nah, I'm not too keen on it. You're not hot on it." Uh, you told me that. I started watching. It. I was like, "Well, I want to watch it anyways. I'm excited about it." And I didn't know a whole lot. I just knew that like it was getting some praise. They were interviewed by Mick Garris of Postmortem, and I was like, "Well, he's not going to interview shit filmmakers." In fairness, he's recently interviewed Damien Leon. No offense. But <laughs> I felt like I. I uh, no so offense, that, that you came piece on. of shit filmmaker. <laughs> no, look, uh, after I listened to Damien Leon talk about Terrifier and his whole journey uh, to yeah. it with Mick Garrison, I have a lot more appreciation for him. It's not my thing, mm. uh, but I to totally love that it's still part of the genre. Anyways, you said that the scene was the highlight of the movie that went all downhill. Because I was texting, I was like, this scene was awesome. This came out of nowhere. It was in your face. It was up front. Yeah. Uh, but there was, like, that sterility to it that that character uh, evokes throughout the whole film. And I was completely checked in with it. And for me, it just maintained. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as far as relating, that is the only... Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I mean, she, she was she was a great character. Uh, and, and the performance mm -hmm. was phenomenal. Like, every moment she was on the screen was captivating. Uh, yeah. The rest, Mar Marin Ireland playing yeah. the uh, the pathologist in the hospital, right. Rose. D yeah, yeah, Doctor uh, Frankenstein, if you will. Your daughter's genetic profile made her a perfect candidate for an experimental treatment I've been working on. For meningitis. For death. Um. Everything else. Mm -hmm left me wanting more uh i wanted more uh i wanted more horror from the child being brought back from the dead i wanted more jump scares i wanted more interaction with frankenstein's monster i wanted uh you know maybe the the actual mother the nurse uh played by uh judy reyes to have some some hard choices to make regarding regarding like interaction with her daughter as opposed to sure. as opposed to should i uh you know step over the line 
uh, with this stranger just to keep my to keep my daughter alive. Right. Which 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 we knew she was gonna do. Like you know, if she doesn't, the daughter dies and the movie's over. So she has to you know make that choice. Um, but I just would have liked to have seen more, uh, maybe more sacrifice, you know, like, well, maybe I think it's like that you're yearning for more, uh, not to, I'm not demeaning this term or you and it by saying it, but like a more traditional type of a horror movie, because this really isn't a traditional horror movie. This is much more of a, a slow burn, uh, experiential, uh, <laughs> emotional experience psychological sure. horror more than anything even start part thriller part drama it's yeah. not a traditional horror movie that is going to have a jump scare or is yeah. going to have overt kill count or anything like that it's not right. going to focus on the monster it's focused on these two women right how they entwine their lives and how they pursue this necessary endeavor together yeah and both coming from different things you know the one the pathologist is all the symbolism and ways that they identify as different people like she's the pathologist she sees people at the end of life uh the mother is a nicu nurse bringing life into this world and now they're both intermingled into being right at that edge of death and rebirth and what they're trying to create with the with the daughter uh with thought was just really magical the way that they were able to capture it. and plus it's such a uh, a what's it called a claustrophobic movie it's just in that how right, or in her apartment the, you know, yeah, flat apartment, and the yeah, hospital yeah. it's always so confined and it's like just a gross feeling you see months go by in time and you just feel this dread as they're just going through the motions and have this yeah. awful existence to try to maintain this experiment one yeah. obviously cares about the science the other one cares about her daughter yeah and I, I guess for me it was it's just super tragic. you know the the human drama element was just was just you know turned up to 11 it was just a little a little much yeah it was the, the, heavy on that no, yeah not now on the horror now that being said there were uh moments that i thought were were excellent um uh, i loved loved the backstory with um the doctor and her mother and that yeah that was twisted and that the revived or the rebirthed uh pig uh he she named Mariel. after yeah she named after her mother um which you know was cool and weird <laughs> yeah i mean everything i thought that the film just did a great job of creating the world that they're living in and really giving a lot of agency or explanation as to why they were driving the decision making that was going on you understood and you empathized with them from the start yeah. in different ways but then you were also very hurt and upset with how they were pursuing it as it's to impact other people it's one thing when the scientists or the the pathologist's body is the harvesting tissue uh as she's stealing semen from whatever john she could get to donate uh, right inadvertently you know uh like so that's her body and then she loses that ability to do it so there's all kinds of commentary that's going on as far as a woman that encounters that point of her life where she's not able to conceive she obviously is upset for a very specific reason and it's just for the scientific purposes not because she wants a child but the mother who loses her daughter is past the age of being able to compete conceive again so this loss for her is so impactful and it's just there's so many layers of ways to engage and approach it that i think that what they're trying to say with this movie was just so elegantly told but in this hor horrifying veil that as a, a fan of the genre i thought was a necessary piece especially in this frankenstein uh mythos that exists you know, i just really it ain't it grabbed me and i just enjoy the ride the whole time and i think it was all the women's issues like the amniotesis that they do like the the syringe to take out some of the amniotic fluid that's a traumatizing experience uh and they show you a, a snippet when the the mri uh not the mri but the um what the hell is it called the wand and the ultrasound Ultra. where you can see the image of the baby's head and the needle entering to pull like that's life and death right there and they're intentionally having this woman go through this multiple times so that they can get what they need from her and use her 
and she's now living with the fact that she's gonna have to keep going back. She doesn't know if her baby's okay because they keep telling her that we gotta keep doing the test, we gotta keep doing the test. And each time that they're doing the test is this insane violation of her and her child's space. It's grotesque. But there's no way other way to retrieve this kind of data. Uh, so it's just it's super disheartening uh, and traumatic if 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 you're locked in and emoting with the movie in that kind of way. Uh, and then Christ, her final outcome, right? Is <laughs> also just it, it. Just it keeps going yeah. hard in the paint <laughs> with with each progressive act of depravity for them to continue this experiment with uh, with her child. And so, I think it's warranted the the scale I gave it. It's just I understand your disengagement with it. I think that this film is for a certain kind of person that maybe has that experience or is more willing to to get on to that experience and not have the traditional horror elements in the movie that they're watching. Yeah, 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 I mean, I don't know exactly what it was when I got disengaged, like, I because I definitely was in right from jump, like, I loved how she treated her subordinate, I loved the scene in the bar. Yeah, there was some levity every now and then. Yeah, yeah. um, I I just, when, you know, when they started living together and they started doing the work and I'm just like, I don't know. I just, it was right around there where I was just like, okay, I guess, I guess I'll stay in to finish it. But I just got to kind of, I agree. I think that what you're out. identifying is maybe like a little bit of pacing issues because it does become a bit monotonous and time is passing and there's a, a gradual escalation that really starts to have a steeper curve by the end of the film and the conclusion of it. But yeah, you kind of have to have, it really had to grab and you had to be content with that experience. Uh, and I think, you know, it's just, it's yeah. just a bad alignment. You just met at the wrong time yeah, I one, think, for you to really appreciate it. One last piece I really enjoyed was, um, cause we, you know, you've seen Frankenstein, I don't know, a hundred times. Uh, I love, I loved how they took the approach with the child, um, as like, brain death was so long that by the time she was revived she had like a blank slate almost like a newborn and so treating the Frankenstein monster like a newborn it had to learn how to walk again it had to learn how to talk again Um, it had to learn everything from scratch in almost real time like that's how this movie does time jump a lot to to get the the daughter to even start communicating with the doctor and her her mother and and only has like that one remembrance uh of of the song uh then that and that's the only connection that the mother can even find with the daughter and share with the daughter um at this point in the film and in the development of the child and then and then you get the scene where she's acting on pure instinct because she has no, you know, no mind to speak of, where um, she gets what bitten by the pig and then and just one shot, you know, kills it with the some yeah. kind of pole or something. Yeah, as far as like the animalistic nature, I think they kind of even talk about you know the way that the brain or the mind is like defaulted or just like clean slated, like you had mentioned, yeah. and how uh, like because the scientist is always validating, oh well, that's just a natural reflex, that's just inherent in our genetics as human beings, right? Uh, that has nothing to do with her and her past life with you. That's just there, and there, that cold sterility of those kinds of statements juxtaposed with the mother's wanting to perceive these acts as her daughter being there or behind that veil. Right. That tension is always there. Uh, and that's really what's driving a lot of the engagement that a person should or may have with the, with the film. And yeah, it's a good observation. Uh, I'm totally into it. Like this was um, Laura Moss's first directorial uh, film or feature. I'm excited to see what else comes by the, the interview that they did on Mick Harris' postmortem was excellent. If you're a fan of this movie, I would listen to them talk about it. Uh, a wonderful encapsulation, a retelling of the Frankenstein legend in modern day, uh, focused on a female perspective that I think was a much needed um, re- rebirth of the story. It wasn't stale. You kind of knew what was going on, but I liked its perspective. I think it was unique and uh, awesome 
one of the highlights of the year for me in the indie lane not maybe like we'll see a seven could definitely be in the top five slash ten this year oh they're uh, gonna be a few kind of year. <laughs> if we go if we do a top ten uh there's gonna be a bunch of sevens in there <laughs> uh i think we might be doing a top five <laughs> this year sure um so uh birth rebirth afterbirth i gave it a four <laughs> i landed at a seven for a birth rebirth and uh, for the podcast for the recently deceased, I'm Nate Roberts. I'm Rodney Godek. Take care. And we'll see you next time. What is it? Sex toy. Don't look or I'll stop. Okay. okay.